Okay, so welcome to the world of communication. Huh? So in communication, what we study? Tell me. So we have two types of communication. You can say digital and analog. Yeah. And uh, our discussion will be mostly analog communication, not the digital one. Okay. So mostly we are going to discuss the which communication? Analog communication. So our syllabus is all, I mean, all about analog communication. Okay. So of course you must be knowing the two historical facts, uh, which you know put the basis of uh, or beginning of the wireless communication era. So the first was. The famous Hertz experiment. So what he did was he simply took two circuits and uh, using the two circuit was the circuit was there was a dipole. So he used some sort of dipole. And he used a, a solenoid. And there was again a dipole. And using the inductor, he established that this is biased, some values there, so the voltage is there. So using the inductor, he created the a spark. And this is called the spark gap. And he made another circuit with some resistor and all. Maybe emitter was there. So this is what he made actually in the very beginning. And the spark produced here also created a spark here. And what you can realize that there is no source of energy here. So the this is the transmitter one. And so the receiver circuit which he designed. And this was the beginning of the wireless communication. But this was, I mean, of course, not very famous because this was mostly uh, confined to the lab. So the guy who actually made it uh, public and uh, made it famous was the a 20 year old uh, Mark Kahn from Italy. So Mark Kahn actually established the radio communication. And he first performed this uh, experiment in uh, between uh, England and there's a place called uh, from name P, some Pudol, something like that. Okay. So radio. So he is said to be the father of radio communication. Although Hertz performed the experiment that uh, the you know signal can be transmitted from the two circuit between two circuits at a few meter separation. This was roughly I think uh, uh, one to one point five meter uh, separation. But this was okay, mostly lab based, and it came it remained in the lab only. But Marconi did some, you know, extraordinary. He made some other circuit called tuning circuit, and with the help of tuning circuit, he was able to transmit uh, across uh, Atlantic Ocean. Okay, and uh, he was charged with many uh, suit uh, by the cable operators, and but he became famous, I think, after the uh, this Titanic disaster. Okay, because if there's a wireless, then uh, they could have communicated across the Titanic and things could have been uh, really different. But he became very famous because of this uh, disaster. Okay. Most of the development of communication, uh, it started mostly in the, uh, you can say, American continent, I mean, that area or some part of Europe also. Okay. Uh, America was very fast in implementing the ideas. Okay. But uh, the theoretical development occurred uh, across Europe and uh, 
I'm at as well. Of course, the famous uh, Bell and Bell AT and AT AT and T laboratory is also responsible for the same. But okay, the communication happened anyway. The Russians were very ahead of this. Okay, so they had, I mean, they had developed much more than America. But again, the World War and all uh, shifted the science mostly towards America because of a safety reason. And then, of course, the German Nazi attack was also responsible on the Jews that they shifted from Germany to America in the okay for uh, safety purposes. And then science actually uh, became rich in that era in America okay, because all of them were there. Maybe a good strategy for Americans. Okay, so I will not go into history of I mean, communication. Uh, so, of course, Marconi did something. Uh, we had a Hertz experiment. The main thing happened. And then eventually the era of satellite communication happened. And we'll come to know why we need to have satellite communication. Why not uh, uh, a regular communication by the cable and all. So the thing is, uh, communication happens at different frequency. And... Uh, the problem with the high frequency wave is that it cannot be carried by a regular medium because high frequency gets uh, uh, attenuated when they pass through the surface. So if you try to propagate the high frequency or low wavelength frequency uh, uh, along the Earth's surface, that's called the ground wave propagation or communication. So the low frequency is uh, easy to be absorbed by the surface. So there is a tremendous loss of energy. And uh, therefore, uh, it will not reach that destination with uh, good strength. Okay, so that's uh, one problem. Other problem is uh, a small wavelength cannot be diffracted easily, so it will be blocked by the buildings or the any infrastructure. So for ground wave communication, we used a larger wavelength which can easily bend across the building and can go uh, without much obstruction. And also, the larger wavelength will have a lesser attenuation we call it attenuation means loss of power okay and then the fastest communication happened by the invent of optical fiber okay again that happened in the us uh, in the early 70s so the famous one is the transatlantic optical fiber cable which is the reason behind the the ww revolution okay ww triple w revolution world wide web so what you think is internet is actually a physical entity. So we do have a, a physical server and we do have a cable and those cable carries the data or information over the Atlantic Ocean, comes to other parts of the world. So it comes to Australia also. And from Australia, again, it comes to some Asian country. And from there, they again spread across the you know earth, uh, telephone channel or cable and eventually it reaches a different part of the world. And you eventually get the, the end communication happens with the help of Wi-Fi or whatever. That's the end communication. So if you have installed Geo or uh, uh, Airtel fiber network, so that is the end communication. Before that, everything is physical. So most of the communications are physical and the close distance communication, uh, we do it in a wireless manner. So that is what generally happens. So communication is not... Uh, uh, something instantaneous process it, it takes some time to happen but the speed of light is so fast that uh, everything almost seems to be happening in a real time scale so when you watch a, a live broadcast of a match it is actually five second delay from the reality and five seconds is you can imagine how much is five seconds it's too much for the light isn't it so in five second light can travel how much 15 lakhs kilometer so it is not the light it is taking too much time. Light will take less than one second to reach any part of the world. It is the conversion, okay? Because a signal, I mean, a match is nothing but a set of images, right? So you, you have sound as a data, you have image as a data, you have to compress the data, okay? So you have to convert the data into other format which is suitable for, you know, communication. You send it across the channel. Channel means the medium which may be the uh, water air uh, space or sky communication satellite based communication it reaches the destination then again you reconstruct the images and you reconstruct the sound and then you mix the sound and the image together eventually to be transmitted over the 
uh, various channels. So the process takes a lot of time and the time is happening, the scale at which these are happening is in a microsecond or nanosecond scale. So one second is a big time interval when it comes to communication. One second is really a very, you know, kind of long duration. So everything is happening in a nanosecond scale. So one second, you can imagine uh, 10 point nine events can happen. So there is nothing like a, a, a real time. Okay, It's like always a delayed, but uh, of course you don't realize all this real time. So we have something called elements of, I'll not go into theory, I'll just to discuss something. We'll go to mathematical form, elements of communication system. I'll just discuss it just for the beginning. So in every communication, there are few things which you need to know, uh, which are essential to make this possible. So essential, you can say you can part of the communications are transmitter. So transmitter is generally uh, an electrical circuit with antenna. Okay. So antennas are basically the transmitter and uh, it could be uh, there are two types of transmission. It could be a uh, guided transmission and the other is called the unguided transmission. Now, what is guided transmission? You guide the wave in a small, uh, you can say, confinement, so like the uh, optical fiber or some sort of uh, telegraphy wire. Earlier, they used to have this. And uh, unguided means you simply throw in the air or vacuum. It goes, travels and comes to the uh, different part of the, you can say, world anywhere. So transmitter is basically, it's uh, made of, uh, basically transmitter will have few things. It will have transducer, transducer. It will have some electrical circuit. Of course, you can say that it will have some semiconductor circuit also, but that, that all comes in electrical circuit. It will have antenna, of course. So all these three are part of transmitter. Then again, we have, communication channel. See, channel means nothing, just like the space. When anything through which the signal can propagate, we call it channel. It just sounds nice, nothing else. So communication channel, or you can say medium. So you can either use the word medium or you can call communication channel. So it is up to you, communication, communication. Or you can say simply medium. That's also okay. And the third is what? Any guess? Mm -hmm. If you have transmitted, if it has, if it has propagated through the space, eventually you have to receive somewhere, right? And that's a receiver. So this is the basic, you can say, infra which we need uh, for communication. Now, transmitter can only transmit the electrical components. Okay, a communication channel can only transmit the electromagnetic wave, and receiver can receive the electromagnetic wave. But there is one part which we need to understand that what we talk, let's say the speech signal, this is not electrical in nature. It's just a variation of pressure which we uh, receive as sound. So there must be some device which can actually make it feasible for the machine to interpret these uh, pressure variations. Okay. So every device which we use to make this possible is called transducer. Okay. So what is transducer basically? Any guess? What is transducer? Converts a mechanical wave to an EM wave. Yeah. Wave. It is it is okay. It simply the definition is it is a device which converts the non-electrical form of energy into, I mean, electrical form of energy, that's it. So anything which is non-electrical, it, it will convert into electrical format. So generally what we use for this, so there is something called piezoelectric, I think crystals. So these are basically quartz crystal. And it is very powerful in converting uh, accurately the, the pressure variation. So your microphone is basically a device which, you know, receives the pressure from the 
the speaker whoever is speaking and uh, after receiving the pressure variation as per the variation of pressure it creates equivalent variation of voltage or current in the circuit so this is the role of your microphone so what you speak is the pressure variation and the equivalent uh, because once you say something it is pressure variation is received upon by the this piezoelectric crystal and uh, they can easily modify i mean as you say something uh, their frequency also gets uh, disturbed or you can say altered and equivalent change in the voltage is also brought upon and that voltage or you can say current is actually carried so machine doesn't understand sound okay they only understand the voltage or current so we need something like a uh, a transducer which can do this job okay uh, signal means whatever it's a uh, something which is a function of time and position we call signal so if you remember the wave sound we write y equals to a sign omega t minus k x it's a progressive wave so every you can say signal is some sort of simple or complex progressive wave okay so we can take care of this uh, signal in terms of a sinusoidal function and we are going to use the word signal for this function only okay so what is signal it's a simply a function which is time dependent okay hello 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 so in communication we use electrical signals so instead of y you can also write e equals to E not sine omega t minus k x, or you can say the b equals to b not sine omega t minus k x. So any uh, progressive wave format, you can use it. And these equations represent which waveform? Plane waveform, right? And how to understand its plane waveform? You can see the amplitude is constant. So if amplitude is constant over a distance, what we call plane waveform. But if you write E equals to E naught upon R sin omega t minus k dot R. So which form is this? Anyone knows? This is the spherical waveform. And if I write E equals to E naught by root R sin omega t minus k yeah, dot yeah. R. This is called cylindrical. cylindrical waveform. So this is what we have discussed. In every communication, there are some issues. Okay. What are the issues? If you are simply sending the signal, and if the signal will meet someone with the similar value of frequency, let's say you are sending uh, a thousand hertz signal, and the surrounding is able to produce a signal of same frequency through various disturbances what we eventually call noise then noise can easily you know superimpose with these signals and will distort the actual signal so what we will receive is the distorted signal so there is an issue of superposition now the question is how to get rid of this uh, unwanted superposition sometimes we do have the you know intention of uh, superimposing two wave but every wave, if it will superimpose with the wave we are trying to transmit over the channel, so channel will have this ability to superimpose some noise. Noise means unwanted signal. A wanted signal or desirable signal will superimpose with the unwanted one. We call it noise. Okay. So how to get rid of this? Any idea? So the idea is similar frequency superimpose. If I make the frequency difference really high, then this superimposition can be prevented. Understood? So by modulation? Yeah. So of course, so, I mean, we need high frequency signal. So we never transmit actual signal. Like what I'm saying, I will not transmit. What I will transmit? A high frequency signal. But the question is, if you transmit the high frequency signal, then how you will get to what I am saying? Because I am saying a low frequency signal. Sound is a, or human voice is a, 
or a speech is a low, low frequency speech. signal. But low frequency will superimpose with the noise. That's a very, very big problem. So how to get rid of this? So what we do is, as per the shape of the input is speech signal, we modulate the high frequency signal. In a way, you change the variables. So the simple question is, in how many ways you can vary any signal? In how many ways? So a uh, signal we can express as y equals to a sine 2 pi ft minus omega t plus 5. You can write like this. In general, a very general signal. So in how many ways you can vary y? So there are three ways in which you can vary. You can vary amplitude. You can vary frequency. Ah, why am I writing this? This is Kx. Let's do it. Omega t minus Kx, right? Now Kx is, K is the property of medium. X is simply coordinate. Okay, so we can't uh, change the property of channel or medium. So we can, what we can do is we can change the amplitude, we can change the frequency, or we can change the phase. There are three possibility of change. Okay, so when you change the amplitude of high frequency signal, because that is going to be used for the actual propagation, what I'm saying is not. So what I'll do is I'll vary this value as per the input speech signal. Of course, in electrical form, not in the other form. So when you do so, you call this process as amplitude modulation. Uh, what modulation simply means modification. Okay. So we have three types of variation possible. Amplitude modulation. Okay. What is other? Frequency modulation. And the third is called phase modulation. So these are the three types of modulation which you come across. Either you change this, this, or these three. So when you change the amplitude of the carrier signal as per the input speech signal, the name is called amplitude modulation or AM waves. This will become FM. FM. And this becomes so most commonly used modulation techniques are amplitude modulation and Frequency modulation. I hope this is clear. Why we do modulation is clear. Yes. What is the issue with modulation? See, low frequency having lot of issue to you know in order to transmit to the space or medium or channel. The issues are what are the issues? It can be superimposed with the noise signal. What is noise? Unwanted low frequency signal. Okay. So what are the I mean, uh, ways to get rid of this? Don't transmit the, your actual speech signal, rather what you transmit, a high frequency signal. But to get the information as per the input value of speech signal, we make the variation. And those variations are read actually at the receiver end. We know how to read those variations. So we read the variation and we reconstruct the speech signal. And for that, we use a device, I mean, of course, we call demodulator, or basically that is called the peak detector. We'll see it very soon. And now there are some other issues also. Okay. So issue is that uh, to transmit a signal, you need to use an antenna. Okay. And antenna will consume some power. Antenna means what? You release some signal, basically, every electromagnetic wave is energy. So when our antenna is, is releasing the EM signal, it is releasing the energy. 
Now the power of antenna is proportional to the length of the antenna upon lambda whole square. This is called the power radiated by the antenna. Power radiated by antenna. So obviously the issue is if you use the low frequency, I mean, uh, what you can say, the low wavelength, uh, or you can say low frequency, whatever. The the length will become if you if you're using the low frequency, it is high wavelength, and high wavelength means basically you have to use a large antenna. So there is also also called the size of antenna. I mean, this is not the right formula. This is the energy consumed size of antenna. So size of antenna is proportional to wavelength. Okay. Size of antenna is proportional to if you want to transmit a low frequency, which is as good as saying transmitting the high wavelength. So imagine if someone is trying to transmit the radio wave, the radio waves are in kilometer. Understood. And to transmit kilometer, we need a minimum of lambda by four. How much we need? Now you may be wondering why we need lambda by four. Because every sinusoidal wave can be reconstructed by taking at least one fourth of the wavelength, right? You can see. Yes. If I have this much part, I can reconstruct the entire part by taking the reflection and changing the phase, right? Yeah. But if I give you only this much, can you construct the entire wavelength? The answer is no, because that is not going to replicate the other part, isn't it? So minimum wavelength that we need to reconstruct a signal is lambda by four. So the minimum we can say size of the antenna is always lambda by four. And because the size is lambda by four, a larger lambda will force you to use larger antenna, which is difficult to construct. So it is like an infrastructure issue, or you can say econo economical issue. So also the low frequencies are not you know preferable in order to transmit. So you know that for aliens we have installed the uh, the life size antennas, right? As big as a football ground antenna. If you have heard recently, China has I mean had made a big antenna which you know got broken down. I think last year only. And it is as big you can play football, you can play any game. It's such a big antenna. Because from the distance cosmology, what is coming there? It is coming the radio waves. And the radio waves are very, very large. So now this is the problem. Now, as the you know progress happened, and you know, we as a civilization, when we grew in technology, we kept on switching to the higher frequency signal transmission. And as we kept on moving to the high frequency, the lambda got to reduce, reduce, reduce. And the size of antenna becomes so small that now the antennas are fitting inside the device itself. So if you ask your parents that there, there used to be big antennas on the rooftop earlier. Okay. So in at least in my childhood we used to have the antenna called this is a very famous antenna i hope you have seen this antenna at least in picture yagi uda antenna it's the name of two japanese scientists okay don't worry and the antenna was like this so it's a made of aluminum. Have you seen something like this? Yes, sir. You know, this length is variable length because uh, you will receive different uh, wavelength actually. So every rod is antenna. It is not like, a, of course, we have a set of rod. So depending on the wavelength we use, uh, lambda by four and then multiple of that. So we have lambda by four, lambda by two, lambda also. 
and then it will have a rod supporting rod now you can see there is something very important to understand here the antennas in india or most of the asian country are horizontal which means the oscillation of electric field of the em wave must be what parallel to this line so this is called the polarization so the orientation of antenna will tell you how transmitted the wave is polarized i hope you know the polarization the word polarization you know oscillation of yes. wave in one plane yeah yes sir so antennas are basically designed to keep the oscillating field parallel to the rod or at least in the plane of the rod because if it is not in the plane it cannot be received and to receive different uh, wavelength so you can also remember that in india basically this was a radar actually uh, this was used in the world war 2 now if you know the history of science when we go to the higher development in science or technology the we can say the lower technology or the old technologies are given to civilization for the commercial use so the first use is by the defense actually and when defense develops a technique or a way to have a better uh, you know security because as the world progresses they have to switch to the a different frequency range uh, in which they operate their signal so that the civilian do communicate using signal and the defense will have the secrets they do communicate and because this in uh, information should not be trapped or should not be catched by any other unwanted you can say agent so they do this at a very different frequency level generally very high and uh, as you go higher in frequency see high frequency is like a kind of need so every defense authority will use a different range of frequency and so if you have if you have heard this 5g technology basically every new technology you give a different frequency range in which you allow the operators to send their signal and definitely as you move to the higher frequency the performance becomes better in many ways okay so this is the yagi uda antenna which was basically the uh, radar which was used in the world war 2 by made by these two japanese scientists ww2 and then it was given to the civilization as a you know commercially so now you can use this for your purpose so we had a television and we needed this antenna to receive the signal every rod is antenna basically so antenna is rod and i have said you that any metallic conductor will have free electrons right so the moment this electric field coming from the signal superimposes on the electron this will start oscillating and what will be the frequency of oscillation of this electron same as the frequency of incident wave isn't it hello 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 yes so it is the when uh, antenna act as a receiver this, this is basically a receiver so when we are using the antenna at our household we are acting i mean we are treating that uh, entire antenna as a receiver it could be transmitter for the broadcaster so when a news channel is sending the information i mean of course anything whatever so they are i mean they do have antenna but their antenna is transmitter and when we are receiving at our end we have a receiver over the years the frequency range has been increasing and that's why the antenna size kept on decreasing earlier this used to be more than 1 meter so it was roughly 1 and 1/2 to 2 meter long and uh, in my village i mean i mean we used to stand up this on a bamboo uh, roughly uh, you can say 30 40 meter high okay because of course uh, the the trees or the jungle will obstruct the signal so you have to keep it really high okay. and also in certain orientation because the transmitter signal is coming in some direction so if it is not properly aligned the issue is it will not receive in the right fashion okay anyway so the frequency of the incident wave and the frequency of oscillation of this electron will be same 
and this oscillating electron will create the alternating current AC, correct? And this AC current basically is received by the television. And based on this AC, okay, you recreate the other information. So eventually it's a uh, capturing of the wave and taking the wave as your input and then creating a equivalent current output in a similar frequency fashion. And that is how the information are exchanged. Anyway, so that's very interesting. So that's antenna. Now the issue was the size of the antenna is proportional to wavelength. So using low frequency, you need large antennas, which is not convenient, isn't it? So that's why also we need the high frequency communication. So the high frequency is kind of need actually. And that need we kept on fulfilling as we develop more and more. Things. Okay. Now every signal which you transmit, okay, they get absorbed by the medium also. Now, now it is also found that uh, a medium will have the preference to absorb more of the low frequency signal and it fails to absorb the higher frequency signal or you can say a high frequency signal will have the better penetration power so as you keep on growing the frequency uh, probably the penetration power will keep on growing and that's why if you are transmitting a very high frequency signal let's say uh, when uh, isro or nasa uh, they are transmitting the signal to the outer space the, to the satellites uh, for communication that has to go through the entire layer of atmosphere right and as you move ahead in the layer you will face something called ionosphere or thermosphere now ionosphere is very dangerous in a way or very helpful in a way so the property of ionosphere is that uh, it is high in charge density in stratosphere what happens the temperature suddenly drops right so when you are flying with in a plane, the temperature is minus 40 degrees Celsius, right? So roughly 220 yeah. Kelvin is the temperature of that height, which is roughly 10 kilometer above. But going further, once you cross the uh, stratosphere and go to the higher I mean, level, there the air density is less. The cosmic rays are powerful. We have the ozone layer. And those rays are able to, you know, uh, create the ionization process. And because of the ionization, we have large charge density. And this charge density basically decides the refractive index. Okay. So the outer part of the atmosphere will have a variable refractive index as per the charge density. And that will act as a very nice. So as you go up, the air density decreases. But ironically, let me tell you very interesting. As you go up, the air density decreases, but the refractive index will also change in a way that it will allow the high frequency signal to undergo atmospheric reflection, the TIR, you know, TIR. Yes. So as the you know the high frequency high frequency signal will pass the initial atmosphere, the regular one. But this electric the ionosphere will have the high electron density so it will have a refractive index in fact the refractive index of ionosphere is yeah it's interesting it's less than one so what we think that uh, n is always more than one right but n could be less than one so if you have i mean seen that question in the one of the iit j question of 2015 in which they use the meta material and they say that in metamaterial, uh, the Snell's law will behave in a different way. And they introduce the negative refractive index also, a negative refractive index. And what is the negative refractive index? Light will come here. Normally, it goes like this in a density medium, right? But I yeah. said no, in the metamaterial, it goes this way. This is the property of a negative refractive index. But here we have the uh, refractive index less than one. And the reason is, see, high frequency wave, it means the wave which are not visible. Mostly you can see cosmic radiation or UV radiation, which are uh, very much part of the uh, the sun rays. Okay, we, we don't get those high frequency rays at the bottom. So we are lucky because of the ozone layer, right? 
so those high frequency will follow a different uh, you can say in a way the law okay so they have different printing power uh, they behave differently they have different refractive index things are quite different but what happens a satellite you see satellite is not able to uh, why we need satellite communication if your frequency is really high it will cross every layer of atmosphere i mean there is no way to reflect back and the problem with the high frequency is that you cannot transmit the high frequency through the ground wave propagation why high frequency cannot go through the ground because high frequency means low wave and low wavelength can be obstructed by the buildings by any you know the things which are erected on the surface building school whatever and also the earth is a very good conductor for this electronic wave once they come to ground they create a current and they create not just current they also dissipate energy so there is a high level of attenuation so the problem is the high frequency communication cannot occur through the ground so you are relying on what only which communication the sky wave communication okay or space communication is space communication means mostly you can say within short range of communication let's say within a city or across a city that's okay but if you want to communicate across the globe earth is not straight na earth is round so how to send the signal from here till here is it possible to send like this can you see the difficulty of communication no. yeah so what is the only only way out you have to transmit and come back here and you need to take the help of reflection a reflection or basically tir total internal reflection so you need to have communication like this now as the range will increase you have to do this a satellite will have certain line of sight so this height of satellite i mean uh, sorry this height of antenna can transmit up to here so it can be received by this height i mean of course they can interact so different part of the earth will have different uh, uh coverage so antenna one antenna cannot cover the entire earth so you need to use uh, multiple antenna in fact even one satellite cannot cover the entire earth right so can we cover the entire earth with one satellite so you just need to know the basic geometry of a uh, high school you cannot draw tangent like this what the maximum coverage one satellite can give to the earth what is the minimum number we need to cover the entire earth any guess Even so, uh, I think three is enough. Minimum. Yes. Because because we are missing only one part, right? Yes, sir. So some part will miss in both cases. Now, if you just shift and bring the third one, then the coverage is possible. So on an equator plane, if you just look what the equatorial plane, uh, the minimum satellite we need is minimum is three. But now we have hundreds of uh, satellites. See, every communication having a need. We need to understand that uh, uh, as we progressed as a civilization, uh, we kept on switching to the higher frequency uh, for better. Uh, you can say you know facilities, everything better only. But everything came with some issue. Okay, so ionosphere is also very good uh, radio communication in which you you throw the signal towards the sky. okay and it uh, get reflected back by the atmosphere because uh, in ionosphere only this reflection will occur in ionosphere we have the you know charge density and you will come to know that uh, the refractive index of a medium depends on the electrical charge density generally when you talk about the the material let's say air water there also we have a refractive index but it is because of the dipoles now the dipole oscillation is the reason behind the refractive index and dipoles are also charged particles so every medium whether it's water or air or kerosene these all are made of dipoles and these dipoles actually interact with the incident uh, electromagnetic wave which you call light light is basically em wave right the electric field of the light actually incident on the medium and the dipole of the medium interact with the light and that is how it, it is able to change the direction now change of direction is okay you think this is change of direction but the way to think is it will interact the dipole dipole will recreate the signal or you can say em wave in a different direction so basically they don't bend they recreate okay 
So when the light is entering a medium, what do you think? Is it light bending? The answer is no. Light never bends. Nothing is happening. It is the medium which is recreating the light in this direction. And the light which enters never comes out. What comes out is the light emitted by individual dipoles. Now that is something very interesting. If you have uh, studied the ray optics uh, from video, you must have gone through this discussion, right? Anyway, so the weight once in the world is different. I mean, for you, the refractive index is the snares and all, but the reality is it is the charge which actually you know decides the nature of uh, the medium and hence the uh, refractive index is based on the frequency or uh, based on the charge density and so on. So all those things matter. Okay. I hope this is clear. Yes, sir. So in the high frequency, what is happening? It will get reflected by the atmosphere. It will come back and you can see. But as you increase the frequency beyond certain limit, once you go into gigahertz, the ionosphere is not good enough to send the frequency back to the earth. It penetrates and goes. So what choice you are left with? Which communication? Satellite. Yeah, you will go for satellite communication. Because once it will cross the everything, I have satellite you know, installed in the orbit. Those satellites, let's say I have geo stationary satellite. So I'll connect with America or Japan or something in the neighboring country whom I have the uh, strategic relationship and call to the defense ministry that see, I have this signal needs to be transferred to this country. I need your satellite because of this position is good for my communication. So that's why we need internal diplomatic ties, relationship. Everything works. I mean, for you, the world is simple, but we need international relationship also for these, you can say simple things to execute for some reason. So if you want to strengthen your uh, space research, you have to do all these things. So we all are dependent in certain ways to other countries also. Anyway, so satellite connection is the, the end goal, like the highest frequency, what we need is satellite because it will be receiving the, the wave anyway. So when I am transmitting, it will be received by in the orbit of satellite. This is called the uplink. Okay. And then the satellite will retransmit back to Earth. That is called downlink. Okay. So we have uplink and downlink uh, in the world of uh, satellite communication. Okay. So that's very interesting. Frequency plays a vital role in deciding everything. Okay. The size of the antenna, the power transmitted, and so on. Everything depends on the same. And the power transmitted is how much? So a very small lambda is also dangerous. No? Do you see? The cost will grow. As lambda is very small, power is. So a small lambda will make a LL also small. But it will also cost. Because low wavelength will have higher cost of transmission. So that's why not everyone is going to use the highest frequency. Okay. So I'll tell you something very simple because in examination, they will ask you which frequency belongs to which kind of communication. You go through the logics, no need to mug up the answer. If you, if you go from kilohertz, probably it's a, a small distance radio communication. If you go to megahertz, you will go into the television range. Okay. And if you go from megahertz to the, because in, see why we need megahertz. In television communication, we have to transmit a signal as a video signal, as a voice signal. So it's a high, you can say, uh, efficiency is required in transmitting such a huge amount of data. So there we need, of course, in megahertz, but then you will go to gigahertz for the even further higher communication. So by logic, you can arrange the frequency value. Okay. Also, I can tell you, as the civilization has progressed, frequency has grown. So we started with satellite or we started with the radio. Tell me. What we radio, started with? Sir. Definitely radio, no? Yes, sir. 
so you know the how to arrange the the frequency range so as civilization has progressed frequency has increased that's a simple rule why i'm saying this because there are many informative questions they will ask in the examination uh, most of the question you can answer by common sense okay so what i'll do is yes. i will okay, do we have time yeah i have half an hour so what i'll do is i'll just tell you the the amplitude modulation part okay so okay that's it So let's start the amplitude modulation. So I'll share a theory. I mean, uh, notes actually. You can just read about it. It's just informative. So I'll go back to the mathematical, but amplitude modulation. So how we represent signal? Okay. So when we talk about signal, we always have two types of signal. One, what you see, one is the what the message you want to convey. Okay. So we have something called the message signal. We can write an MT. And what is the message signal? Uh, what you want to convey. So I can write a AM sine okay, omega t. And I am not writing the what you say the kx part i'm just writing at the point of a receiver or at the point of transmitter okay so i can put x equal to zero that's easy isn't it so this is the massive signal i mean you can have any signal you can you want or you can keep it simple i mean you can remove the phase also this is a simple massive signal okay uh then you do have because this cannot be transmitted because this is very small frequency so this is a small frequency message signal. But we always have the carrier. Carrier means carrier. OK, so imagine if you want to go for some uh, marriage ceremony and you are well dressed with all the makeup. Will you prefer going by car or by the walking if it is two kilometer? You know the answer. Car, if, you, if, you, if you go by walking, then what will happen? All the dust and everything, you will get a different layer of makeup, right? Which you will certainly not like. And uh, everything will be like distorted. So you are the message. And whatever happened while you're traveling to the destination was the noise. So you got superimposed with a variety of noise, which you want to prevent. So you need some carrier, right? A fast carrier or a slow carrier? A so fast will you, carrier. Fast, will you prefer a, a open rickshaw in which you can just travel? Then mm -hmm. the air will just, you know, will throw the makeup here and there. So that's called the carrier. Carrier is generally a fast moving and high frequency signal again it's a signal so generally we use light actually and the piezoelectric crystals are able to generate a frequency similar to light okay so that's why we use the piezoelectric crystals they are very unique one they are mostly the quartz crystal with the with natural frequency same as the light okay so this is generated this uh there we have a piezoelectric generator so that piezoelectric generator creates a pulse, maybe mimicking the the light pulse. Okay. So anyway, we have the carrier wave CT. And how can I this as AC sine omega C T? If you want to connect arrive a phase also, I'm ignoring the phase part because we are not going to do the phase modulation so that I can ignore. This is your carrier. This is your message and what you want to modify or modulate what kind of change you want to bring you want to make this ac as per the message so a regular sine wave how we plot up and down up and down correct yeah so a regular sine wave is this one you know? This is high frequency. 
and how you are going to plot the low frequency signal message signal so what you want to do actually here you know what you want to do here actually you want to make the peak of the carrier to be confined in this message signal you want to confine the peak you know inside this gap so modulation means basically you want to modulate this way you want see now the message signal is nowhere let me tell you it is the interpretation we don't have message at all so this is the envelope you can just imagine now my carrier signal will oscillate this way so this is the same frequency carrier but what we are doing the amplitude which was constant now it is do you see the amplitude now of the same carrier so it's variable it's variable so this is called modulating the amplitude of the carrier as per the message and see the the dotted line means it is not present it is just for your understanding so my message is like a hidden or encoded so how i'm going to uh, going to get back my message any idea at the receiver end what we need to do exactly to get the information back still we decode it again according to the white dotted line no this there is no dotted line we only have a carrier which is now deformed this particular way as per the message to receive the message again i will calculate the peak value the highest value of the carrier right so if i just read the peak value and if i plot it what i'll get my message isn't it hello 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 tell me guys are you getting it sir so using the amplitude we again convert yeah yeah so we read the amplitude of this new carrier and we reconstruct the message do you realize this what i'm saying no yes sir So basically, what so I'm doing is hence the lambda by four. Yeah. So we are going to yes. So we are going to read this these values, and if I read these values and plot it, will I get this dotted line? Yes or no? Yes. Yes. Yeah. See, even if you give me lambda by four, even if my antenna is able to receive this much, it will recreate the signal, isn't it? Hello, hello, hello. Yeah. Yes. Sir. I mean, of course, you cannot recreate it with less than that. So, lambda by four is the lowest value which we need, and lambda by uh, two is the general value. Okay. So, in Marconi, Marconi, what he he used? Marconi used. Okay, if I remember. So, Marconi. This Marconi. Yeah, actually, he used lambda by. Two, I think. Just Marconi used lambda by two, lambda by four. One of them used lambda by four. Who used? Okay, I'll just check it and tell you. But let me tell you, the one who used lambda by four, what he did was he grounded the antenna because a grounded antenna will act as reflector. If you remember the, you know, stationary wave, the idea. so a lambda by 4 we when we use we keep it grounded so that the other end will act as reflector so it is like a the ground will become a mirror and it will recreate the lambda by 4 like this so a grounded lambda by 4 will act as lambda by 2 antenna and when they use lambda by 2 they only keep the antenna and they don't ground it so and this the bar or you can say rod these are called dipole antenna any line any rod is called dipole antenna so if you have seen the 
your disk TV at home. Okay. That is called the parabolic antenna or parabolic reflector, right? It is in the shape of parabola. Isn't it? Yes. And the distant information or the signal is coming. Yeah. And as a plane wave. And we have a receptor exactly kept on the focal length. Focus. Yeah. Focus. So after friction, it all, all will come here. And signal coming from the long distance will be always a parallel beam of light. And we know that in parabola, we have one focus. Okay. So these are also antenna. We have uh, this uh, shape antenna. We have other shape antenna also. But we also have the line antenna, which we call dipole antenna. Okay. <clears throat> anyway, so antenna is not my concern, but uh, the, the quarter wavelength antennas are grounded. Just remember this. I mean, I don't know who has said what, but anyway, I'll share you the sheet you can read. So quarter wavelength antennas are grounded. And half wavelength antennas are not grounded. Remember this fact. Half wavelength antenna are not grounded. Just remember this fact. Okay. So how we get the the modulated signal? So we say CMT carrier, which is modulated. We write CMT. And what we are going to modulate? The AC will modulate with the message. And then the carrier is carrying only. So that's why this is called amplitude modulation. What you are modulating, you can see the A has changed, right? And who is yes. changing the A? The carrier. The carrier. So if you plot the graph of uh, this, I mean, this uh, circuit, uh, uh, sorry, this um, equation, it will look like a really simple. So, so, so. Simply draw the what you draw? Draw two lines AC and minus S. I'll just show you how to draw this simple circuit AC and then do the sine graph over this value. I'll just draw up to here. Let me just do this. Okay. So this, what I have drawn is the graph of only this part. How to do this graph? So something sine theta is, the sine theta will oscillate between the something. Isn't it? Hello, hello, hello. When you write y equals to a sine x, then sine x graph will oscillate from where to where? Minus a two plus a. Hello, hello, hello. Yes, sir. If yes. I write two, if I write two, then plus two to minus two. Yeah. Three yes. Then? Plus so, three to minus three. So if I write something, then plus something to minus something. Hello, hello. Tell me, guys. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So my carrier will oscillate from where to where? Plus something to minus something. And you can see the something is like this. So this is my carrier. You can see. Learn these simple tick tricks. My high frequency carrier is this. Basic trigonometry. Huh? No need to know physics. Now it's maths. Okay. So what is this height? This height is how much? This is AM. And what is this height? Minus AM. Okay. So if you read peak to peak, 
pp you know see the amplitude will see in circuit the amplitude always refers to either voltage or current so always remember that when we are writing the equation although it's a trigonometric equation uh, it's a definitely a signal but for a device these are representing the corresponding voltages so in examination you may get confused what is ac what is am because they will never give you ac and they'll give you the the voltage actually so you have to understand that okay voltage is actually the amplitude okay so what i'll do is i'll just mention here as a point ac or am will be given as voltages okay so i hope this is not difficult so if you read peak to peak what is the max to max voltage or what is the maximum voltage of the the modulated signal so what is v max which you can read so you can read v max as this is actually ac plus am right v max means what from here to here this is the maximum height you can read isn't it not getting hello hello, hello. so maximum voltage you can read for the modulated wave is how much for the modulated wave yes. what is the maximum voltage you can read ac plus am yes yes sir and what is the minimum you can read this value minus okay. ac minus am correct ac minus am now remember one thing okay this is the modulated signal this graph is for modulated signal so i have plotted the graph of cmt do you realize yes or no yes if i tell you that the for the modulated wave the maximum voltage and the minimum is given can you find the voltage of carrier and message yes so the voltage of carrier will be using these two questions we can get ac will be how much v, v max, max plus v micro. mean by 2 the average yes. tell me guys is this clear yes or no yes sir and similarly can i say the am will be v max <laughs> minus v mean upon 2 yes so, so the, you see you are going to get the first question based on this form, uh, this diagram itself so they will ask you this question given the maximum and the minimum of the modulated signal remember which signal modulated not individual given the maximum and the minimum of the modulated signal can we find the amplitude of a carrier and a the message so we can find na? yes or no hello 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 yes sir so yes. this, is the, this is the first question you will get that's why this is the discussion is required so this is done now we can move further so we have the modulated signal cmt equals to ac plus am sine omega mt into sine omega ct i hope this is clear yeah of course it is clear so what next we are going to do we are going to take ac common if i take ac common what i get one plus am by ac sine omega t so we wanted to keep this as the actual formula of carrier so now we are getting one plus something into sine omega mt and then ac into sine so here comes the important part this ratio am by ac this is called modulation index so now comes the first symbolic notation or terminology which you need to know which is called modulation index always remember it's a fraction generally so massive signals are low frequency and low amplitude signals 
and the carriers are more. So we use symbol mu. And mu represents what? Km upon S. And if you remember, this is nothing but the V max minus V min upon V max plus V min. Yes. Hello, guys. We just derived no? this form. This form. Um, yeah. Yeah. A C A M. I have written here. So can we derive the? Can we write the modulation index? So there are two ways in which you can derive the modulation index. If you know the V max or V min of the modulated signal, C M T, you can get the answer directly. Or if you know the A M and A C of the message and carrier wave voltages individually, or you can say voltage amplitude. So the two ways will be clear to you guys how to write. <laughs> A majority of question from this chapter will come from the use of this formula, modulation index. So these are like uh, you know question uh, which are going to face in this chapter a lot. So these two works will give you at least three to four questions. Okay. You can solve right at this. Now we can move further. So now my modulated signal, we can rewrite in a nice way as one plus mu sine omega masses t into, or oh, let me keep AC here only, it looks nice, sine omega ct. What is the next step? The next step is simply multiply. Don't worry much. So we are going to go to AC sine omega ct. The first term looks like when you do modulation, the modulated signal will have superposition of the actual carrier wave, correct? And then the other term is interesting. This is the modulation part. Mu AC, sine omega MT, sine omega CT. Now, this is the actual frequency, I mean, actual signal. This is the modulation you have brought. Okay. Hello, guys. Is this clear? And you have yes. to learn this derivation. Let me tell you, if you have to learn this derivation, if you want to solve any tough question of communication, uh, then this derivation must be clear in the mind. Okay. How to derive is important. In case if you forget, this part is interesting. You have to take AC out. If you remember this part, you are mostly done. So the second term, we can, uh, because it's a product of a two sine term, when you write any, I mean, see, I would like to see what are the components of modulated signal. I know one is the carrier wave, but what else? So to see the what else part, you have to convert this into a single sine or cosine term. How to do this? You know the basic trigonometry. Can I add mu AC by 2 here? And then I can add 2 sine A sine B. So if you remember the sine equation, omega CT, what is 2 sine A sine B? It must be, I think, cos relation, right? Cos A minus B minus cos A plus B. Cos A minus, minus B. B. Yes. So cos, can I take high frequency minus low frequency? Cos A minus B. Minus cos A plus B. Minus or plus? Minus. Um, Finally, now we got all the three separated term. So these are called the superimposition of these three. So you can think of this modulated signal as superposition of three types of signal. Carrier. Then other, other will have the modulation index into AC by two into cause difference of frequency. And the last will have mu AC by 2 cos omega C plus 
so by virtue of modulation how many frequency component you got how many so how many frequency you can read here Same three. Yeah, so there are three frequencies. See, every product of a sine function or cosine function, or you can say sinusoidal function, will lead to some extra term. And that will give you the component wave, which are actually superimposed, or you can uh, thought as these are superimposed to create the modulated signal. So basically, there are three types of frequency. If you look at the frequency part, what are the types of frequency? Omega C, Omega C minus Omega M, Omega C plus Omega M. Okay. And if you if you want to plot this, let's say this is Omega C, then this is your Omega C plus Omega M, and this is Omega C. We know the carrier is high frequency. So compared to the carrier frequency, the masses, masses frequency is very, very small. So if carrier is in megahertz, the message will be in kilohertz. Understood? Hello, hello, hello. Hello, hello, hello. Immortal yes. guys. Yes, sir. So you can yes, see that sir. you can see the three types of frequency, no? Yes. So this frequency, the frequency which is more than carrier is called USB, which means upper side band, side, side of the carrier band. This is called any guess? LSB. LSB, LSB. sir. The lower sandwich is very smart. So this L means lower. U means upper. S B means side band. Basically bandwidth. So we say side up. Single side band. So there are very, I mean, simple. In a modulated signal, we have three frequency. If you plot the graph of uh, frequency value. So, so the omega C is somewhere here, very, very far from the origin, it's omega c. If you add something, it will just go here, and if you separate, it will go here. It's a switch mark. So it will give you the sense of bandwidth. So just for illustration, let me make it slightly bigger. So this is the omega c, this is omega c plus omega m, and this is omega c minus omega m. And this entire difference is called bandwidth of channel, which you need actually. Channel bandwidth. So if you have seen the local radio, like you know, radio mirchi, I know only know radio mirchi. What are else? Radio mirchi, and then there are so many you know? radio. Rainbow also, something like this. If you have heard in uh, this local radio station, tell me the famous one. I know only Radio Mirchi. I don't know why. Any 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 other name you remember? Radio City, I guess. Radio, radio City, yeah, yeah. Radio City also I have heard. I have heard one more. Like one, there are three, four, no? How many are there? Radio one. Radio. Radio one. Radio Not. one, okay. yes. Sir. All right. So you know these these channels. Okay, they they get license from the government to operate their channel in certain frequency. So if you read their uh, number, 
Radio Mirchi 90. Okay, uh, let me see this exactly. I'm very much disturbed by not knowing this. Um, okay, it is FM radio. FM radio. Yeah, huh? only three. Radio City, Radio City. Yeah, FM Radio Gold. Yeah, uh, they haven't mentioned the frequency. Right? So let's say uh, it is written 106.4. 106.4. FM, some name. I will not promote any. Name. Okay, and then we have, uh, I think there is 90 point something. Yeah. Uh, I got. Ah, uh, okay, I got all values then. 91.1 radio city. Okay, I'll let, I'll, okay, I'll let 91.9. Okay. So, you know, what is these values? What is this number which they put before their name? Omega C. That's yeah, that's megahertz. Omega C. So these are the frequency that government has given to them. Megahertz. And this is in megahertz. And you can see that uh, there's a gap between the two channels. I mean, the closest I can see is Radio City and Radio Nasha. Well, that's very dangerous. You see, the, the difference is in megahertz, correct? And the difference is only 0.8 megahertz. There are so many channels coming. So I think the gap will decrease day by day. I can see a gap 0.8 also. Oh my God. Such a small gap. Anyway. Now, first of all, these are the omega C in over which they have to transmit their, uh, they have to broadcast their whatever show us, okay, whatever. Now, what is the bandwidth part? So within that omega C, you will be given some band in which you can transmit. It could not be that exactly one. Okay. So the bandwidth we define as the gap. How, what is the gap here? Oh, 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 okay. This is not like this. Twice of F. Those bandwidth is in frequency, not in the angular frequency. So how we write we? Two. FM, understood. And FM is what basically FM is omega m by two pi, understood. Yes. So every yes. channel, every channel will have the omega c. I mean, you have given a kind of a a rope, you know, on which you can walk. But again, let's say there's a ropeway. The ropeway will have some hanging, the you can say the the vehicle right in which you will go and sit. So every channel will be given a wave, I mean, uh, of course, a frequency over which they can transmit it, but they will also be given certain range of frequency beyond the, or, you know, uh, around the omega C over which they will have the monopoly of transmitting. So this is all decided by the, the government only. And that's why you buy the license. Uh, and if, I mean, of course, if frequency is not distributed in a certain protocol, what will happen? All frequency will mix up, isn't it? So imagine that no, there's no restriction. You can, you know, transmit at any frequency you want. So you also choose 98, I also choose 98. What will happen? Your wave and my wave will interfere. So that's why the bandwidth is a very important concept which they use, and that will decide that what you can broadcast. Okay. So if Let's say if a certain program uh, is of certain, I mean, they will give, okay, we'll see solve some question to get the idea. But, but this is the whole idea of omega C and omega. Okay. And the uh, idea of, I mean, bandwidth. This is very important for all of you to know. Okay. So this is the first part. The second part is the power relation, which they generally ask. Go to next page. Uh, shall I continue for some time? Yes, sir. Yes. Yeah. yes, sir. 
So now the next part is called the, the power relation. So power relation we write in three ways. We write P, C, that is the power of the carrier, power of carrier. So I can make a like you know a flow chart power. So power will be of three types. Uh, basically, you can say two types: power of carrier and power of SV. SV means side band power. And this is the carrier power. And this is called the total power, PT. But the sideband will have two other parts, PLSB and PUSB. So now if you remember the any for any AC, how we write the power, power of any AC signal, doesn't matter if it's a communication or AC chapter or any chapter, for any AC alternating source, <coughs> Okay, so the there are two, two parts, LSB and USB. Okay, power of any AC, how we represent? If you know the voltage, so every circuit will have some voltage, some resistance, right? So how we write the power formula? So it is the VRMS. VRMS, IRM. Oh. Yeah, of course, you can say IRMS. VR. Square I. Yeah. Yeah. So in AC, we choose the RMS value, okay? Now yes. look at this. If you look at the you know the answer which we have got here, we have got three terms. If you look closely, and just look at the uh, the amplitude part. So the amplitude of whether it's LSB or USB, the A is same, correct? <laughs> so power of carrier will be how much? AC by root two. Whole square by R. Hello, hello, hello. Yes, sir. Because everyone, see, all signal will eventually pass through the uh, space and will pass through the, uh, progress through the same transmitter or same receiver at the same time. So R is same for all. So we can add AC by root 2 whole square by R. This is clear. Why we are writing PC like this? So the answer turns out to be how much? AC square by 2R. 2R, yes. What is the LSB answer? Any guess? It is mu AC by 2 itself is the value by root 2 is the RMS whole square by R. So the answer is how much? Mu square AC square 4 to the 8 are right. Hello, hello. Is this clear? And the same answer is for the USB. So I will not derive again. Just check is, is this correct? <laughs> so what is the the SB power? The side band power is how much? Hmm. Either twice of LSB or USB, right? Or you can say P LSB plus P USB. Isn't it? The side band will have this much power? Yes or no? Yes. So side band will contribute how much? <laughs> Mu square AC square by 4R. Correct? 
I hope this is clear. Yes. So the formula will be like, what is the total power? I will ask you, uh, what is the total power? And it's easy derivation. I mean, uh, if you just remember the basic, you can derive it. So total power we can write as <clears throat> P carrier plus PSB. Isn't it? So the total power will be Is this correct, guys? Yes, sir. I can take common AC square by 2, right? Yeah. I will get mu square by 2. And this I know. This is PC only, no? So generally, these are the relation which they will ask you. What is PT and PC relation? It is 1 plus. Okay. So the total power can write as <coughs> PC plus. So, I mean, again, it's like uh, every answer you can express in terms of only one power that is the power of carrier. So, it is a very common thing that uh, to express the power of everything in terms of power of carrier. Okay. So, the total power is carrier into one plus uh, modulation index 4 square by 2. And uh, PSB is also mu square by two piece. Okay. So now we would like to know the current relation. Can you guess the current relation? So P total is how much? I total is square R, where I total is the RMS value. Isn't it? And PC we can write as IC square R, where IC is the, again the <laughs> RMS value. So you can take the ratio. What is PT by PC? IT by IC, whole square. So, PT by PC, we know the answer. So, IT by IC, whole square is 1 plus, you can get from here, 1 plus mu square by 2. And now you know the answer. So IT is how much? IC under root of understood. Is it difficult? Yeah. No, sir. No. So let me do some question for you. A simple question will be like this. An audio signal of amplitude 0.1 volt is used in amplitude modulation of carrier wave of amplitude 0.2 volt. Calculate the modulation index. Oh my God. Hmm. Hello, hello, hello. So answer is 0.5. Signal the C AM is given, AC is given. You can find the mu, right? Yes, simple. But there is one more question which they will ask you. Modulation of, of a carrier view. Earlier, we modulated, modulated the carrier wave by one single signal, right? But what if you want to modulate by, you know, multiple signal, M1, M2, M3, like you, you want to write AC plus M1T, M2T, MKT, and then you want to write the
And if you do so, so you can take AC common. So you'll get one plus uh, something like a mu one by, I mean, not mu one, mu one into something, correct? Some sine function, sine omega one t. If you remember yes. how, how we used to write mu two into and so on. And if you realize, I mean, I will not say that you do this calculation, but we know for these two, we got the answer. See, for every term we got, to, see, one means you will get one carrier, right? So there's only one carrier, but rest will be what side band. And with every product, what we get? Tell me common sense. You'll get mu one AC by two. I can tell you what you get. You get mu one AC by two. Sine, I mean, one less, one plus, right? The difference, the first was difference, right? Difference, yeah. and then sum. Sir, it's a cos right? Ah, yeah, it's cos. Yeah, just I'll do this. Cos, just a And see, you're not supposed to do all this calculation. You can just remember the rule. But this term will become plus, plus many such terms, like then mu two, then mu three, am I right? And it will continue like this same similar way up to whatever number you have, isn't it? Yes. Hello, hello. Yeah. So what will happen? The Carrier power is the same as earlier, but the side band power will add up, isn't it? Yeah. So they'll ask you to find the equivalent modulation index or the total modulation index. So total amplitude modulation. So amplitude modulation index of such wave will be how much? So how to solve question like this? The answer is the P side band. And we can write as mu square by, if you remember, it was two into AC, right? I think this was the answer. Sorry, PC. So we get a mu two square by two PC, if you remember. Mu three square by yes. two PC. Dot dot. I can continue this. So to get the net value. I mean, if you want to replace all this side band by a single side band, so what you cannot mu equivalent e square PC by two, isn't it? Yes. So what I'm going to get is mu one square plus mu two square, mu three square plus dot 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 into PC by two. So the effective, I would say effective is the right word. More amplitude modulus index of the mini sine wave is with the is equals to how much mu one square plus so you square and, and add all system that's how we get the formula so this uh, formula is again useful so next time you're not going to be i mean disturb you can simply say p total is always p carrier plus p sine term, sb and sb you can add directly as mu effective square by two pc so these are some formula which you can always use to solve the more demanding problem mm -hmm. i hope this is not very difficult or is it okay. no sir so, so you can just go to the previous page once so um, why was the first term taken out? Where's so, the first term? So this so AC, this AC into one into this is only one term? Yes, sir, but the mu one sign omega. That no, one this, this into this, we have connected into this, no? difference in sum. Oh, okay. Sir. Yes, sir. Isn't it? 
and the same thing you can add for every product of terms. So sine omega 2t and sine omega ct. Can we react like this again? <laughs> Isn't it, guys? Tell me. Yes. Okay, let me give you one question. Just for practice. So we are done with the first part, which is AM part. There are two, three formulas. Uh, one is the frequency modulation. And uh, then we have the antenna height and the coverage question. And I think that's it. And then the rest of the theory, which you, I will share with you, you can read about it. Okay, so question is, uh, a broadcast, broadcast, AM, transmitter, radiates, 50 kilowatt. So what is 50 kilowatt? Okay, nothing. Of carrier power. Now you know the answer. What is 50 kilowatt? Okay. So 50 kilowatt here represents what? PC, sir. Very good. What will be the radiated power at 85% modulation? So what they asking? They asking the which P? Hello, hello, hello. Which P they asking? PT. Guys, tell me. Huh? PT. PT. Huh? Oh, that's it. So okay, you know the answer. How to solve? PT equals to PC into one plus. Mm -hmm. No, 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 of 75 percent it's all way of saying the mean calculate pt i mean that's it leave it don't sorry i think you got it right what is this question same uh, repetition of number i mean calculation the third question this is somewhat different i think A message signal of frequency ten kilohertz and the peak voltage peak voltage ten volt is used. To modulate a carrier of frequency one megahertz, <laughs> and uh, peak voltage twenty volt. Determine a modulation index, amplitude modulation index, and the the side bands produced. The side bands produced. Can you solve that? Okay, I will not give you more than one minute. Sorry.
Done? Come on. Why so much time? Hello guys, is it done? Sir, one second. Sir, sir sideband frequency means you want the amplitude of those? No, no, sideband frequency. When I say sideband produce means frequency of sideband. Okay. Sideband is frequency, no? Frequency range. Okay, yeah, yeah. So you are supposed to find the USB and LSB frequency, not the omega, F, F. I think everything is given, no? Sir, mu is 33%. What, mu is? Mu is 1 by 3. No, 1 by 2. I said 10 and 20 given, what are you doing? If you read the question carefully, it is to say that a massive signal of frequency 10 kilohertz and peak voltage 10, which means the V max of the AM is given, right? Yeah. Is used to modulate a carrier of frequency 1 megahertz, which is omega C, I mean FC, and peak voltage 20, which is AC. It is not given for the modulated one, right? Okay. You took it. You took it wrong. I mean, you took it twenty minus ten upon twenty plus ten, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I that is that. only when the modulated wave peak is given. Okay. Hmm. So that is for the modulated wave. When the wave is already modulated, then we use that formula. Okay. Okay. So I mean, this is simple. Okay. Anyway, I'll just quickly finish the frequency modulation. So you all got the answer? 990 and 1010? Yeah. Hello, guys. Yes or no? Yes. Yes. Okay. So now is the frequency modulation. There is no syllabus of J. Frequency modulation is not written, but it's still they ask. But nevertheless, mm -hmm. you know how to do the frequency modulation, right? So how to write the frequency modulation? So if you have a question, y equals to a sine. Okay, you are going to modulate the frequency of what? Carrier or Signal, massive signal. Signal. No, no. What you modulate? You modulate carrier as carrier. per the as, as per the message. Yes. But what you modulate is carrier, isn't it? So first, try to understand what is the frequency modulation. We have the carrier wave, and uh, I will show you. You can see here what I have done. It is like more compact in some location and less compact in some location, isn't it? 
So you can see there is a gapping which I have changed, right? And gap means the time. So you can see the smaller time gap represents high frequency. Okay, so higher than the like a regular value. And the less gap means low frequency, like lesser than the actual value, isn't it? But I haven't affected the amplitude of the carrier wave, isn't it? Do you see this? Hello, hello, hello. Please respond, guys. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I haven't changed the amplitude. What I have changed in this case, only the, the occurrence of the cycle. Yeah. So sometimes it is occurring very fast. Sometimes it is occurring very slow. And why? What? How we are we are achieving this? We are achieving this through the this simple logic. So when my masses is growing in its value, I can make the high frequency. Then again low frequency. Again high. Again low. Do you realize this? So as yeah. my message is growing, I will convert that into a uh, variable frequency. So I'm going to affect the frequency of my carrier signal. Okay. So, 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 so it's not difficult, but you need to use some integration here. So we can write as carrier signal is okay. Shall be the same. Message signal is how much? AM sine omega mt. And how we write carrier? AC sine omega CT. Okay. Hello, guys. Is this okay? Any doubt in this so far? But what we are going to change? Tell me. Omega? Sir, omega C is variable. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. No, omega C is variable. Correct, correct. So we say that the new frequency will be the frequency of the carrier. Plus, and because see dimensionally, this is amplitude, but we have to convert into frequency dimension. So I have to put some dimensional constant, isn't it? So that when I multiply the message, it gives the dimension of frequency. Are you getting my idea what I'm saying? Why K is introduced here? Any, any idea? Because I cannot add frequency with amplitude. Yes or no? Yes. Sir. Hello, hello. So dimensionally, K into amplitude must be same as the dimensional frequency. So K into L equals to T inverse. So what is the dimension of K, guys? L inverse, T inverse. Hello, hello, hello. Tell me. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I mean, I, are you realizing why K is required here? Otherwise, I can't write, no? Yes, sir. Yeah. I, I simply change the, I simply change the frequency. Okay. So once I change the frequency, my job is easy. Okay. My job is really easy. So what is my job? Sir? Just to Okay, so they put k also okay so no, no there's a uh, there's a way of writing which you need to know and the way is they also multiply this entire term with frequency i'll just change this part just a minute so dimensionally now k becomes k becomes inverse of Dimension. amplitude oh. no, k okay. becomes inverse of amplitude right yes because yeah. KAM must be dimensionless, right? Nothing. Because this is already FC, no? So K, my bad. Yes. This becomes K becomes uh, L inverse. I mean, that's it. Okay. So this is how we, okay, okay. This is how they do. So A becomes how much? FC, we can take common. 1 plus KAM sine omega M. So far, so good. Okay. I could have taken cos also. Sometimes cos is beneficial. Why? Because uh, when you take cos, things are really good. So omega in general, we can write this. Now you can see the frequency of carrier will shift with time, isn't it? Omega C is the actual frequency. 
but because of this modulation you can see omega is variable yeah so how much angle if i want to find the phase phase of this uh, modulated signal i want to know the phase of modulated signal isn't it hello hello, hello. yes hello hello hmm. All right. So, okay, there again, there are many terms they use. So, F is equals to FC into one plus K AM sine omega MT. If I would have taken cause, then uh, things would have been better, but anyway. I'll do it later on. F equals to FC one plus KM. So we define something called maximum deviation. Maximum deviation of frequency. And we represent by the symbol del or delta, a small delta. So what is the maximum deviation of frequency which we can create apart from FC? So tell me that this is K A M del F C. This into F C is the maximum variation you can get away from F. Yes. The actual frequency of the, the carrier wave. Carrier. Isn't it? So th these are like some uh, I mean, terminology which they use. Okay. I mean, uh, you cannot change it. Okay. So what will be the instantaneous amplitude of the frequency modulated signal so instantaneous instantaneous amplitude of frequency modulated signal which means i would like to now write cmt uh, cfmt I mean, how to say this? Carrier, <clears throat> no, CMT is the same, definition is same. No? The way will, uh, we represent will change, right? All right. Hmm. So how to write the answer? CMT we can write as, tell me guys. AC, sine. Now omega is not same, no? it is omega T now. Earlier it was omega C T, now it is omega T. Hello, hello, hello. Yes. And this omega is basically omega C one plus. What was that? K H sign. K M sign omega. Yeah, K M F C right. K M ah. sign. No? Sign MT, right? Yes. And uh, we can also write this in terms of del because that's a way of writing. I mean, that's a uh, way it is preferred to be written. But the but, amplitude yeah. is not altered here, right? So only yeah, the yeah, frequency yeah. is getting altered. Correct. So that's why the omega we have to substitute now. Earlier we used to substitute here, if you remember. Yes. We added the AM into ac actually now yes. i'm not doing anything there i'm just taking the omega as a variable so now the modulated signal will look like something this ac sine omega c one plus k a m omega m t into t oh my god This will be like an equation, right? Yes, sir. But generally, we don't write like this. Uh, the way of writing is theta. That's it. Another question is, what is, what is the theta here? So theta will be what? Omega dt integration. Because omega is variable, isn't it? 
So omega dt integration will give you how much? Omega c one plus k v m sine omega m t. Because theta is function of time, I cannot write omega t. Right? Omega t we used when omega used to be constant with time, isn't it? Uniform circular motion. Yes. If it is non-uniform yeah. circular motion, then I have no choice but to integrate only, isn't it? Yes. Sir. Yes. So theta turns out to be how much? Omega ct. The first term, right? And second term is k v m omega. Sine integration is minus cos. And we have to divide by omega m, right? The rule of integration. Correct? Tell me, guys, yes or no? Hello, yes, sir. So we get something really interesting here. So theta goes to omega ct, and now it's a minus because we have taken a uh, sine function. K, V, M, omega c, okay, I can write as in terms of frequency. Omega c, we can also write as f. So you can also write fc by fm. Doesn't matter, you can write continue with omega. Cos omega mt. Okay. And now the definition, the maximum deviation that we used was to replace this term. So this is the theta where the delta was the maximum max deviation of carrier frequency due to modulation and uh, fine so we got theta so now what is the instantaneous frequency so what we need uh -huh. Theta we got as omega ct minus del by fm cos omega mt. And you can see this is something which we have seen before. If we compare in the derivation of this, can you see this? We used that this as one plus mu, right? You can see. We introduced the ratio as mu. And AM was the deviation actually, if you remember, in terms of amplitude deviation, right? Apart yes. from AC, apart from AC, you deviate the value by AM, right? Similarly, on the similar line, you can say, what is a del? Del is a deviation. Okay. Upon FM. So this is called modulation index for frequency modulation. So this term, term is important here to remember. Modulation index for frequency modulation. That was the modulation index for the amplitude modulation. Now we are going to learn something called modulation index for frequency modulation. FM. And how we write MF just to distinguish. And what is the answer? Maximum frequency deviation. It is called delta. I mean del upon modulating frequency. Who is modulating? The message, right? So frequency of the Modul I mean the modulator, you can say the message. And so the MF is defined as del by FM. So this is how you change the answer. And uh, now you get the answer for the CMT. So CMT now we can write as what? 
AC sin. Tell me this. MF cos omega M2. Is this clear? How we are writing the answer? Yes, sir. Yes. Tell me, guys, any, any doubt in this? No, sir. Hopefully, no doubt. There is no M to this. Okay, so I'll just solve one question. Maybe that is sufficient. And then we are done with the modulation next also. There is one small sky wave communication in which you have to mug up some formula which is given there. And that's just theory. You can read on your own. If you have doubt, I'll discuss. Uh, the proof cannot be given. I mean, that's a really difficult proof. Except the antenna height proof, that's easy. Okay. Oops. Okay, I'll type. So in a in a okay. system when the audio frequency AF is 500 hertz. Tell me guys, in the J advanced levels, have they also introduced communication? Not in mains, advanced. Just let me know. Not sure, sir. We'll have to check. You haven't said the syllabus. What is the name if the AF voltage is raised to 10 ohm while the AF is dropped to 10 finger hertz, what is the deviation find the modulation index on each this okay I'll read the question take some time solve it and then i'll solve the write the next question okay. Hopefully, we should be able to do this. Find the Okay. Well, this is the next question. Question.
So your voltage means amplitude, okay? And audio frequency means which frequency? FM or FC? FM, sir. FM. FM. Yeah, very good. So in the first case, I think the audio frequency FM is 500 hertz and the voltage, which means AM is 2.4 volt. And the deviation in such cases, 4.8 kilohertz. Yeah. So the first deviation is one point, uh, 14.4 into 10 power 3, sir. Yeah, yeah. 14.4. Sir, uh, yes. Sir. Yeah, that's, that's correct. 14.4, 10 power 3 kilohertz, right? Yes. You want to say kilohertz, no? Yes. Yeah. 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 Very good. So what is the first modulus index? It is just a formula. So the deviation by FM. Correct, correct. So the value will be how much? So yeah. Say 28.8. For the first part, second that's second part, no? Mm -hmm. The first modulation frequency is the given itself, 4.8 kilohertz upon 500. Uh -huh. Yes, sir. So that's the first answer. I mean, before you do anything, and then you change something, you decrease or increase. That's there are three questions, right? Yes, sir. The modulation index, three questions. Yeah, yeah. So what is the formula for us? Uh, the delta equals to, what is the answer? K, or you can say? K-A-M-F-C. K-A-M-F-C, right? Yes, sir. And the frequency of the carrier is kind of constant, right? The yes, carrier frequency is constant, so we can say, Delta by AM is 
and we also know one thing delta by fm is the modulation index right this is the form yes. for modulation index okay yes and uh, so what they ask me the first part is the vm i mean uh, am okay okay anyway we will write it so first part is what the deviation this is everything is given i think these are values given to you if the af voltage is now increased to 10.2 so now the new value is how much? Okay, what is going to be constant here? KFC, sir. KFC. Okay, so you can say KFC is delta by n. Okay, so as you increase the value, it means this is constant, isn't it? So delta one by AM one equals to delta two by AM two. Yes. The first case you can solve, isn't it? So the first more the first deviation given was how much? 4.8 kilohertz, right? And the aim is given to us in the beginning. 2.4. Now they are saying if the audio voltage is changed to 10.2, what is the new answer? Uh 7.2 volt. What is the new answer? What is the new deviation, guys? So delta 2 is how much? Can you solve? It's simple. Said 14.4 kilohertz. Yeah, kilohertz. So that is how you got the answer, right? Yes. The next next part is what? If the so AF voltage is raised to 10, while the AF is dropped to 200, what is the deviation? Again, same same process. Yes. Correct. So the answer will be 2 into 10. You can find the ratio, you can get the answer. So delta 3 will be how much? The third case? 20 kilohertz. 20 kilohertz. Are you guys getting the answer? Hello, hello, hello. Yeah. See, this ratio is known to you. This is like a 2 kilohertz per volt, right? And then you can keep on substituting the answer to get the answer. So now the first, the first modulation is how much? The first delta by first FM. So first delta was how much? 4.8 kilohertz. And FM is 500 hertz. So this you can address 9.6. That's it. The second case will be, again, similarly you can get delta 2 by FM, right? So 14.4 by 0.5 if you write it in kilohertz the answer is 28.8 and the last will be delta 3 by fm2 20 by point everything is given i think right so is it difficult to solve uh, yeah maybe slightly okay neither solve the next question quickly How to read, read this equation, guys? Tell me. How to read this equation? This is AC. Tell me. Omega C was 6 into 10 power 8, if you remember. The first term is omega T, omega CT. Correct? Yes. And second yes. term is, this is the MF. Yeah. MF is 5. The frequency modulation is 5. And then we can have sine or cos, whatever. But whatever he is here, the 1250 is representing what? The M, omega, I mean, uh, omega M. I hope this is clear to all of you. This part is clear so far. How to read and write the answer terms? Yes. Hmm. So done. So how to write the power? Power is RMS by R. 12, 144 by 2 is that is to 10 ohm resistor. 
So how much? The power is seventy-two. Seven point two what? Clear? Hello, hello, hello. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And uh, the formula for the maximum division is how much? So d by this by this is mf, which is given as five. What they asking by the way? The delta, na? The maximum division. So this implies delta equals to five fm. Fm, how much we got? Uh, we have omega n, so we can get twelve fifty by two pi. Tell me, guys, is this clear? How we are getting the answer? Yes, sir. So you can solve, no? Twelve fifty into five by two pi. How much is coming roughly? Anyone can tell me. Five into twelve fifty divided by two divided by five. Five. Spot. It is nine ninety four roughly uh, point seven. Ninety four point seven hertz. All right, guys. So we are done with the frequency modulation and uh, amplitude modulation. So this is the modulation which you have to study, and all the formula based question will be from these two concept. Uh, from space wave communication uh, or space communication, we have to find the antenna and the height. It's a basic geometry uh, trigo you can solve. But anyway, if, uh, in the next lecture, I'll show you in half an hour all the three, four formulas. So let me stop the record and solve. Okay, let me record this that also. Right? Height of antenna. This is Earth, right, guys? As you can see, this is Earth radius, and the antenna will be really small compared to the Earth radius, isn't it? But anyway, let's call yes. this as H. So, if you do a tangent from here, that will give you the coverage. How far it can go? Now. Compared to R, it is so small that the part which it will cover will be almost flat, isn't it? Although I'm showing it like it in a three dimensions, but it is almost flat. I hope you can understand this. Okay. Mm -hmm. So what you are supposed to find is this radius. I know how we do it. We join from here. So again, we know this is R. All right. This is R only. And uh, this you can call this as R dash. So if you use the Pythagoras, how to write R dash and uh, capital R and H relation. So you can see the hypotenuse is what? Re plus H. And that must be equal to how much? R dash square plus Re square. And if you expand, this is A square plus B square plus 2AB. This gets cancelled. So R dash square is how much? H square plus 2 REH. Can I write like this? Tell me. Yes, sir. And now what you need to realize that this H is so small, since H is very, very small compared to Earth radius, that H square will be, I mean, you can ignore it the H. This term is almost zero. And not only that, I mean, you can say, 
So because since H is very small, so R dash is roughly equals to R only. I mean, the flat concept. It's very small. H is like a tiny. Compared to the height of your building, compared to the earth, it is, it is just like a dot, isn't it? And if you draw a dot just above the surface, the tangent will be almost touching the right or left. But this is just a derivation. So what is your answer? The R equals to how much? So this is the area for any antenna of height uh, uh, height h can cover a distance r on earth surface, right? So what is the coverage area? So uh, and this antenna will cover what area on the earth surface? Coverage area is? So you can think as a flat surface, you can say pi r square. So the coverage area will be? Pi two R H. Okay. So you if you broadcast some information, it can reach this part of Earth, this much area of Earth. You can think that way. Understood? Hello, hello. Yes, sir. So is it difficult? No. No. Sir. So imagine if you want to, if you have two antennas, one day an antenna is here. And if I extend this, in, I mean, somewhere. So, what is the part we can, which we can cover? So, this H will cover some height. Okay, I'll just show separately. Okay, this. There are two, three concepts which. Okay, let me cover in here. So, the, there's something called line of sight. Okay. So if I have antenna of height H1, the line of sight is this. And if I create another antenna, of height H2, then definitely we can cover this distance, right? This uh, D distance. So how much distance we can cover on earth? D equals to 2 R E H1 plus 2 R E H2. Because the slant we have got, na, R we got. If you remember the answer. Yes. Sir. So the maximum distance we can cover is this much. So based on this formula, only these two formulas, you will get the question. Then there is some few more formulas, which you please uh, remember, like uh, formula for the re refractive index of uh, ionosphere. Uh, there is something called the, the MUF, maximum usable frequency. I think G has asked sometime maximum usable frequency. And this is called the secant law. So in the I mean space wave communication, if this is the atmosphere, so if a signal is coming at some angle, so in the reality, it never goes. I mean, this is the ionosphere, so it will not. A reflect like this rather to reflect no it will just bend the air the tir and then it will come back so the signal will go from here to make a bending the tir is the issue i mean the reason and it will come back so you go from here to here on earth uh, this distance is called and this angle is you can say this angle is called Theta. So the maximum usable frequency is defined as the critical frequency cos theta, which means, uh, sorry, sec theta. You know what does it mean? Oh, I hope you have it ensured. It means something like this. Just a moment. 
So there is something called critical frequency. I'll just explain what is critical frequency quickly. If you remember, I said in the very beginning that every atmosphere can only stop a wave of certain frequency. Beyond that, it will let it go. It will penetrate, isn't it? Yes. So let's say if you are if you are sending a signal exactly vertically upward, okay, and the ionosphere will have some critical value. So let's say the maximum frequency which it can reflect back is called critical frequency. So FC is critical value. But if you throw at angle, you can actually throw even higher frequency. So let's say if a frequency of value, FC can go here and reflect back by the ionosphere, then you can use a frequency more than FC which you can send at angle and it will come back. Are you getting the idea what I'm saying? Instead of throwing exactly up, like radially up, I mean radially uh, away from the earth center, if you throw at some tilted angle, you can actually use a, even a bigger frequency to get reflection from the ionosphere, understood? The atmosphere. Yes. Concept. Understood? What yes. So this is called the maximum usable frequency. So as you increase the theta, six theta will grow, isn't it? So you can actually throw a higher frequency. And this is called, uh, this is, there's a name for this, the distance between the two points of earth, which can uh, receive and send signal. This distance is called skip distance in uh, sky web condition, skip distance and the entire height is called virtual height this is called virtual height and this is called actual height when these are just terminology which if you know it's good otherwise it doesn't matter actual height oh you know this see that too. So what you need to know is that every layer of atmosphere, which we have, you know, the, the degeneration, like uh, the basic one, the lowest one is called, which the stratosphere, the stratosphere, then mesosphere, then ionosphere, and so on. Okay. So the lo lowest is called what? The lowest, I forgot the name, the bottom. Sir, troposphere. Troposphere, or something. Troposphere, troposphere, right? Troposphere. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Troposphere is the lowest one. So as you go high, so the idea is every layer of you know this atmosphere is capable of sending back certain value frequency. So the maximum frequency they can send back if it is incident normally is called the critical value. Now the maximum maximum usable frequency means if you tilt the same signal at some angle theta. Then actually you can send a signal which is having higher frequency than the critical value. That's the whole idea of MUF. Okay. And it's called second law because the answer is so there is a formula MUF equals to this is called MUF in the space wave communication. So just remember this and rest read. I hope this is sufficient. Do you need anything else? Any other form? I don't think any formula is. There's one, two more formula which I have to see and I'll take it. Yeah, this is... So, okay, there's a formula for the skip distance. So, okay, I'll just mention this formula. The skip distance formula. D skip, it is twice H. So H is, I think, the virtual height. 
which is the height of the actual height of the cylinder. So H is okay. Any value mention this into M U F upon critical. So you can also write this as since M U F is how much, guys? F C is set theta. So the D is keep will be how much? To which and this will become sec is for theta minus one. So what is sec is for theta minus one? Ten is for theta. Yes, sir. Okay, oh, this is the answer. So this is the answer for the script distance. H is called the height of a reflecting layer of atmosphere. So this is one uh, formula which you can, yeah, if you want to remember, you can remember. Then there is something called the refractive index of a layer in the sky. The sky means basically set light. This when I say sky. The sky wave propagation. The space means space, but the sky means actually going up. So there's a formula in mu equals to 81.45 n by f square. Now in examination, they will ask you this formula itself. So if you have seen the formula, you can answer it. Else, you know. So you can read it. Anything else? Okay, all are done. Coverage, satellite, internet, okay. remote sensing, mold, music, all are done. Yeah, over. Uh, there is no other thing. The rest are the information which I will suggest you guys to read and become champion. Okay. Okay. So, what are N and F? M U F. So, no, maximum sir, N and F. So the okay, last one. Okay, okay. N is called okay, okay. N is called the charge carrier concentration, electron charge density. Okay. Okay, sir. Electron charge density is actually, and F is the I mean frequency used. That's it. Okay. Sir. And this one is confirm. Yeah, N is the number density of electron per meter cube. Electron number density. This is not a volume. This is number. Electron. Number density. All right. So this is the number density. F is the frequency of the signal. That's it. Frequency of signal used. Okay. Yeah, that's it. So rest, please. I would suggest okay, read about uh, it from the notes which I have shared, and that's that.